What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Rice Rocketeer. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today, I got a bit of a different setup. Um, if you are a subscriber already, you know I got those main three segments. Uh, I got the motorcycle therapy, I got Twisty Journey, then I have my vlog segments. But today is kind of, I guess it's like a hybrid of all of them. Um, it's a different setup in that I'm looking back over old footage that I've found. I've been going through my archives and I've been looking at every bike that I've had. So I've been organizing the footage into different bikes. I looked at my, uh, my Indian footage, my MT-07 footage, my Street Triple R footage, and just tried to kind of like sift through it and see if I missed anything. And I'm really glad that I did because I found some really cool footage, especially for my Indian FTR. Uh, a couple of rides that I just, I guess, shoved off to the side and didn't really end up doing anything with. Um, you know, granted, they're not as well thought out or put together as what I've been trying to do lately because it was kind of before the time of me actually having a channel. Um, but I wanted to share some of that footage and uh, just kind of talk about my experience with the bike, what I loved about the bike, and what I have come to really miss about the bike that I didn't think that I would. Um, so that's what today's video is going to be about. Guys, before we look at the footage, if you have not subscribed yet, if you are new to the channel or new to these videos, please make sure to go down below and hit that subscribe button and click that like button if and only if you like the video. We just hit a, a thousand subscribers, so I've said this in many other times, many other videos, but I just want to say it again to everybody who has subscribed. Thank you so much. I make these videos for you guys. I love the fact that you enjoy them, uh, and I'm just thankful for all of you guys. So. Thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to do it. And let's get into the video. Ah. <laughs> so this was, uh, I believe, Bear Mountain, but not the mountain itself. I was just kind of up and around that area, going through some towns up there. Um, So at the time, yeah, I didn't have a mic set up. I think this was the GoPro Hero 11 Black that I'm using now. Um, but I didn't have the media mod, so it was just the raw mic, which explains all the wind noise. I also had it on my uh, chest mount. I didn't have the helmet mount yet, so it was kind of just like super low. You can see I got the Mickey, Mickey Mouse uh, mirrors on them and my phone is, it was actually fine where it was, but because the camera is so low, it just kind of like blocked out a lot of the, the, the camera view. Um, I had been, I think I had been riding for five months at this point. So I had my BMW G310R for about three and a half months. Oh, there's a person. <laughs> uh, for about three and a half months, and then I traded it in for uh, the FTR, which was like a huge jump uh, for me. And uh, the bike itself was like much heavier. The seat height was much higher. Um, everything about this bike was just like big, big, big compared to a little 300cc bike. So I actually had, like adjusted to it pretty quickly. It wasn't a huge jump, but as you can see in this video, as you continue to watch, it's like you just grab a fistful of the throttle and the whole bike, it's a muscle bike, 100%, uh, and it just kind of bucks. It, it wants to go, it wants to pull really hard in a straight line, um, which in my head at the time, I kind of thought that uh, it was like a sport naked, but with the inner workings, the engine of a cruiser is kind of my how I digested the information that I read about this bike in the videos that I watch, um, which really, this is just like a straight muscle bike. This is like, <laughs> uh, I think of it now, it's kind of like a Dodge Charger, or like, you know, like an old school muscle car on two wheels uh, is, is how I now see this bike. But looking at this footage, it looks like so much fun and so much raw power. It's a very refined raw power. I mean, it is, a hooligan bike so to speak i i did a video a while ago when i when i had this bike about um <laughs> is this a beginner friendly bike or not and my, my verdict i was trying to ride the line between yes and no the the honest answer now that i'm a little further down the line in terms of riding motorcycles in general 
The answer is absolutely not. <laughs> if you're a beginner, do not buy this bike. Uh, it's it's a beast. Um, yes, you can put it in rain mode and you can kind of figure it out. Absolutely, you could do that with any bike, right? You could do that with the Yamaha R1. You could do that with the uh, you know Ducati Panigale if you wanted. But just in general, this is not. Those are not in general uh, <laughs> beginner friendly. Start with something else. <laughs> Um, and perhaps maybe I like underestimated or like don't give enough attention to the fact that I had that 300cc BMW for three months and that was, I did drop that bike. I dropped that bike twice or so and I stalled it a bunch. So, you know, maybe I'm not giving it the credit uh, as a beginner bike and like kind of my gateway, my entry point into riding motorcycles as I should. Um, I felt that I picked this bike up pretty quick, but you can see it's just, it's pretty much a riot to ride. I'm not even going that fast. I'm at like 60 miles an hour right here. And um, it feels like, it felt like 100 miles an hour. Every time you like pull that throttle, you pin that throttle, it just feels like it's going to pull you along for the ride. And I think you'll see uh, me kind of lean off the bike here or there. I'm not, I don't think I'm intentionally leaning because <laughs> remembering, like thinking back to that point, I don't remember really knowing those techniques yet and I think that's honest to God like just a, a physical reaction to the bike having so much uh, torque that I was not ready for so um, definitely a rockers bike and uh, <laughs> I miss it I miss this bike a lot what am I doing here oh I'm giving some distance between me and the car in front of me yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a fun turn. That looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, I really wish I didn't have these mirrors on this bike. He's up a bit. There's a lot I would have done to this bike if I had it now. I didn't really have the confidence or the know how to do any of the switches even something as simple as like changing the mirrors to me was so intimidating i don't know why it's such an easy thing but i and also money too like i kind of shot everything i had at this bike I and mean, this was a sixteen thousand dollar motorcycle and i really the last thing i wanted to do was spend more money on anything you know mirrors are anything on a motorcycle is expensive guys if you're new to riding and you're you're thinking of getting a motorcycle to save money for god knows whatever reason maybe with, with the gas right you have that as an argument of like I'm going to save on gas, so, you know, that's my reason for getting a motorcycle. It's going to be eco-friendly. I'm going to, you know, only have to spend $15, $20 per fill. Yes, but everything you want to do is extremely expensive. All the gear, any accessories you want to put on the bike. Like one mirror, I think, is $100, and that's like a CRG lane splitter. That's not like, on this bike, those things would rattle right off. So, uh, there's a bunch of things that contributed to me not wanting to do things to this bike. But now that I've, you know... I've had my first taste, I put my exhaust, I put my race fit on my street triple. I think any bike I get, I would at least have to have an exhaust. Mirrors change out from the, the stock mirrors, although the ones I have now are okay. Um, if I had this bike today, I would have to get an exhaust to feel this because it even sounds good. Like it's such a raw bike that it sounds good with the stock exhaust. So imagine without the exhaust, it would be amazing. Take the mirrors off. Phone mount obviously moved down just so it's a little further out of view. Those are the smallest things though. And then on the back of this bike, there's this uh, the fender, whatever you call it, the uh, license plate holder and fender. Uh, it's kind of like hanging around, just like hugging the back wheel. I would definitely get rid of that so you get to see the wheel, stick the plate up under the seat. Um, the whole look of this bike is so mean and so, it's such a beautiful bike, but I will say the new versions of these that came out, not such a fan of, like the colorways are just, I, I think what Indian's trying to do is make it a little more modern. Um, and so they changed up the colorways, every, like the exhaust is different. It, it, was, it came with the Acro exhaust and now it's something else. I, it may, may be a better exhaust, I don't know, but it doesn't look as sporty and raw. Like something about this one, this was the 2022 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Indian FTR with the kind of like the burgundy red um, which is my favorite colorway like even before in the prior uh, versions 
Um, I love this colorway. I actually even like the year before this where the, the front and the back wheel were different sizes. I think that looked even more raw. There was something about the flat track uh, kind of style they were trying to retain that I, I really like and I think has gotten lost in the recent versions of this bike. Um, I don't know how sales are, so I don't know if it's working or not, but I'm sure it's a great bike and it works, uh, you know, pulls just the same, but there's something about this edition that I would only want this edition or earlier. Um, none of the newer ones. I think I got the best one that you could. Um, and even I think the 2020, 2019 or whichever was prior to my, this bike here, um, it, uh, it had different tires too. It was kind of like semi off-road tires, although it's not really an off-road bike, but uh, they had kind of a, a fatter, flatter back tire, which made it a little less nimble in the corners, but it kind of gave it this distinct style and also apparently a distinct feel too, which I don't know anything about that because I, I, I didn't ride, uh, ride it. And then the F, uh, sorry, the uh, TFT dash. That's the one thing I did not like about this version. Um, as simple as it is, I grew really fond of this setup right here with the numbers on the left and the kind of like reverse L uh, tachometer. It worked fine and it was great, but I would have much preferred, what I should have done is if they had this colorway in the, uh, just the straight up FTR, this is the FTRS, the sport version. If it, it has that, the, the regular version has that traditional circle tachometer. Um, it's just simple, plain Jane, just that, and that's it, that's all you get. No rider aids or anything, so I wish that they had that on this bike right here because I think it looks just so stripped down and elegant the way it should be because you don't see any of this stuff on the, the actual FTR, the 700cc bike that it's, this one is modeled after. And I like that kind of stripped down look for this bike. Fits the feel. So I think the, obviously the main thing that I missed about this bike is the, the torque at the bottom, that kind of animalistic pull that you get um, from this V-twin. This is a 1200cc V-twin engine. Um, I believe it's the same engine as the Scout. That might be completely wrong, but I remember it shares the engine of something else just tuned differently. Um, I missed that feeling. Now I have, so right now I have the, uh, <laughs> The Street Triple, um, the 2024 or 2023 here in America, 2024 in other countries. Uh, Street Triple RS and Cosmic Yellow. Um, I got the Race Fit Exhaust, the Growler, uh, which is a quote unquote full system. Well, it's not really a full system, but uh, I had to buy the full system. Um, and I love that bike. It's a 765cc inline triple. and. Uh, it's super smooth. So that's what I love about this current bike. I, I adore the bike that I have right now. It's super fun. I love manipulating speed within each gear and really hearing that kind of like wind out of power and feeling it. Um, it's great, but you are missing this kind of like roar at the beginning. And that's something I, I wish you could get the best of both. You know, I guess you just have to have multiple bikes. But uh, when I was watching this footage, that's what I was thinking was like, every time I hit a corner and I kind of give it a little bit, that feeling right there is so crazy and just kind of brings you alive. Like this bike was so lively and I always remember returning from a ride with a smile on my face. Um, what I didn't like about it is how big it was and, um, and how heavy it was too. Like I definitely struggled because I'm, I'm on the shorter side, I'm 5'7". Um, going through Manhattan, it was fine. Like I could navigate through the city, um, but it's definitely not as nimble and it's heavier. So for me, like trying to back into a space, like just small things like that were exponentially more difficult on the Indian FTR than any of the other bikes I've ever owned. Um, so I don't miss that about it. But I think if I live somewhere like this, it would be perfect. Cause on the highway, it was a breeze. Just stick it in fourth or fifth and you're just cruising at like three or 4,000 RPM, no problem. Just, this bike is just cruising, it's like butter. 
Whereas with the, uh, the bike that I have now, the Street Triple, you, ha you don't have to, but it's the best in and the most fun in uh, the power band, you know, where you're revving it out and you can feel it. That's what that bike is designed for. So there's no really relaxing or chilling on that bike for me. I know it's possible. It's just when I'm on it, I want to have fun. Um, this bike kind of was in between. Like you could get in the twisties and this is not really the twisties, but you could buy some twisty roads and have fun with it and throw the bike around. Or you could be on the highway and just feel like you're pulling nothing um, easily. Um, so this was a great kind of both purpose bike, arguably. Um, and I think I wasn't as, like I got this too early in my career. If I get, if I could redo all of my bikes, I would totally switch the order around. Um, this bike should have definitely come in my future. <laughs> Not to mention it was like way more expensive than any of the bikes that I owned. Um, but it also just like, I wasn't ready to get the most out of it. Like if I were to even ride it now, I would get a completely different experience out of it just because I have much more confidence. I don't feel as nervous when I'm on it. Um, I kind of know how to manage different bikes now. So it wouldn't be as much of a thing. Um, back then, this was my second bike. So I had just very limited experience on a, my Vespa as well as the BMW that I had, which was the three, G310R. Um, and then I jumped straight to this. So it was kind of like jumping to the other end of the spectrum. And I ended up getting to have fun rides like this one, but I think I missed out on a lot because I was always so worried about tipping over or I was worried about, you know, is this, if I rev it out too much, is it going to be way too powerful? But, you know, now and or in the future, I think I would have a ride with this bike. <laughs> like if I could borrow this bike from someone to go back to the same road, I think the video would be very different. Um, oh, I miss it. <laughs> This is, <laughs> this is the one that got away. Guys, in the comment section below, uh, write, uh, comment on what your bike is that you feel like you didn't get the most out of or that you missed or that you want back or if you could do it again, you would do it again. Um, what's your, your all-time favorite bike that you've had? And not necessarily the best bike you had, but like the one that really kind of resonated with you and that you, you you wish you still held on to. I'd be really eager to hear what everyone's is. I'm sure there's a huge variety of answers out there because everybody's different. Um, FTR is mine. What's yours? This was a fun poll. It's weird. I remember certain part. Like this is none of these locations are significant to me, but I remember certain things, like certain ways that I turned in all my rides. I look back over all my footage and I kind of like. It's like, oh, I remember that moment, or I remember what I was thinking in that moment. It's weird how that happens. That's a lot of riding. <laughs> I think I put 3,500 miles on this bike. Something like that. Now this is a fun boy right here. <laughs> Uh, the one weird, I don't know if this is typical of cruiser bikes, but Indian had this thing. It might be throughout all their bikes, but it, they had a rear cylinder shut off for like excess heat. So essentially in the summer, it gets really hot when you're like waiting in traffic. So they had a feature where if you idled for, if you were in neutral and you idled for more than, I don't know, it's like five seconds, the rear cylinder would shut off and it would just be the front one that was going off, which I always kind of had a problem with. Like I never really trusted that. I feel like the more working like that's a very busy area of the motorcycle the engine right so to kind of mess with the cadence of the cylinders to me didn't seem right and i know i mean if they're gonna make it if they're gonna put that feature out there they've obviously tested it and tried to figure it out uh and they're the pros but i something i don't know i'm like old school that way and uh the less features the better usually 
and that seemed like one excess feature that it's like if you don't want to be hot you probably just shouldn't be on a motorcycle in the summer because that's like the name of the game <laughs> it's like always sweating your ass off especially if you're like me and you're always wearing gear like i have my le dainese leather jacket they call it a summer jacket summer jackets are not summer jackets they are less wintry than winter jackets still hot and uh i'm sweating my ass off all the time and it's just kind of part of the game i just kind of know that's how it goes so uh, I would rather not mess with the cylinders, <laughs> rather just open my jacket or something, but that's just me. I don't know if that's a, the cruiser thing. Definitely not on sport bikes, I don't do that. <laughs> this is a pretty location, I don't even know where I'm at. Oh, I remember there's just some people on the right here, it's like a golf course or something. A little trap there, oh, no, dirt bike. Quad action. Oh, hello, boy. <laughs> Made a new friend. fly up this road. This looks like so much fun. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing there. I was unsure. Here we go. I remember this bike has such a nice like I don't know maybe I was riding it wrong but every once in a while if you give the throttle you pull the clutch in uh, and hit the throttle a little bit it's kind of like it was clearing its throat and it had this really guttural like, blah, like pop <laughs> love that part I don't know what this is this is like a castle that I found uh, I remember taking this photo I don't remember what location it is Instagram. Oh, that bike is so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> the twin cans at the bottom. They still have the twin cans on the new one, but eh, not, not as much of a fan. I remember this day too because so those gloves that I'm wearing are brand new like maybe worn once and the jacket I've had for like a year and a bit it's like from when I got my scooter my girlfriend got that jacket for me for my birthday um, and it's like I don't buy my gear in batches so it's like when one thing is new the other is old so like gloves were fitting perfectly with the jacket was catching wind in the, in the sleeves and the zipper had broken and like <laughs> Like one thing was perfect and the other was not. Uh, and then I replaced the jacket and my shoes were what needed replacement. So it was like a constant flow of like, I need a new this thing, I need a new that. Um, but yeah, this, this gloves are the first ones that like really fit my hands. So I was excited that day. Now I'm stuck behind cars. This is like the story of my life.
going to the town. Very to the town. <laughs> Buddy, I'm not used to doing this. I don't, I don't mind doing it. I just am not used to doing the in front of the camera thing outside of my motorcycle gear. Very different. I'm not used to not operating the bike while I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> it's not the same flow, and believe it or not, it's become weird for me to not be talking or be thinking about something while riding. I mean, I always think about something when I'm riding, but uh, the whole the whole vlogging approach has become kind of like my default ride. So like I've really had to reset my brain sometimes and make sure I get out there for just a, a naked ride, so to speak, uh, without any of my stuff. Where it's actually been really nice to do the one camera shoots. I've been doing a few of those where I just like I don't put secondary camera, no audio, uh, and it's just kind of to like reset. Um, and it's nice also because I get to think off camera. <laughs> um, That's a bike in front of me. That was a chopper, I think. Uh, not a chopper, sorry, uh, a badger. Which is like pretty common out there. Like a cruiser would be perfect out there. Those roads are just begging for it. Such a relax, like as the sun, like right now, like as the sun was going down, that would have been really nice to just be like totally upright, feet out, chilling. jump on the highway somewhere. Here. Oh, beautiful. I love that. <laughs> That's where I want to be right now, but there's too much salt out there. There's too much salt and ice. We're so close to riding season, guys. I cannot wait. Oh my God, it's all in this weather. We had like a brief window. We had the weird like two, three days when it was, it was super nice. And I made sure to get out for some rides during those days. But you know, since then it's been like rain and snow, rain and snow. Um, this year, I'm getting out there for sure. I'll do some longer rides, get out to like upstate New York, um, go with the friends, the guy that I've been shooting with lately, do, do some longer distances to really enjoy the season because I have a feeling that this this winter was somewhat light I, I think next one's gonna be worse so I really want to get my reps in this year while I can I'm also trying to go to the track if I can swing it somehow possibly <laughs> I have a bunch of friends who are going and who've invited me to go with them they're going I think down in um, shoot, I don't remember, different state they're making a whole weekend out of it um, if I can somehow swing it manage it I will do it because that is the one thing I'm dying to do. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for that, uh, especially from this bike, the Street Triple RS. It's, this bike is meant to be on track, so I, I need to do that. Um, but it's a whole thing, and I don't really have gear for it either, so add that into the, the cost. Um, I'm trying, guys. I really have. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, it's Long Island in New Jersey. <laughs> and watching old found footage. I have a bunch of MT-07 footage, too. Not just the wheelie stuff. I have some, like, city rides that I did. A couple night rides that I did that I haven't posted yet. I'm going to try to work those in somehow in the coming month. Um, it's just fun to look back over the different phases. And you kind of see, I see how my riding has changed. And although it's harder to gauge because they're different bikes. So it's, I don't know how much of certain things are due to the bike and because I was a newish rider on that bike. Um, but it, and nonetheless, regardless, it's, it's fun to look through it and just kind of see where I was at because my style, my interests, and my thought process all drastically changed with every single new bike, also with every new year. Um, a lot of things I thought to be true, even last year, are actually not all that true or just different than I had imagined. So, uh, you know, it's a growing process and it's a fun one, um, very different than I was 
one, two, three years ago. Where's the damn highway? I just couldn't, couldn't stand to get out of these roads, huh? <laughs> Full tuck in to go 60 miles an hour. Although again, that was that bike feels that way when you when you hit it, it it goes. Here we go. All right, guys, I'm gonna let this footage run as is because it's really nice to hear the engine. Uh, it's also super fast and straight line, which is nice to just watch and not think. Uh, I'll check back in at the end of the video.
right guys so thanks for tuning into another episode of the rice rocketeer uh this has been a look back at my experience with the ftr the indian ftr kind of an obscure but fun and one of my certainly if not the most favorite bike that i've had uh definitely the most unique uh definitely the most emotion evoking bike that i've had truly miss it if i get a chance to ride it again i certainly will uh thanks for tuning in i will catch you on the next one peace